This is the third in the series on logarithms and exponentials. Now's the time to introduce logarithms. So these videos are aimed, you'll notice, at school leaders or those just joining university, and in particular engineering undergraduates. The first two videos gave a quick reminder of powers and indices and the definition and properties of exponential functions. So now we're ready to introduce logarithms. So, what are logarithms? Well, the easiest way to look at this is as a definition. Rather than something to understand, it's just something to learn. A logarithm is defined, and here's the key thing, as the inverse function for an exponential. So the logarithm and the exponential are in fact one and the same thing. They're inverses one of another. Now, because an exponential y equals e to the x is a one-to-one -one function, that is for every x there's a unique y and vice versa, then consequently the inverse function must also be one-to-one -one and unique. So this is how we do inverse functions. You could write y equals f of x, then the inverse function would be written from x equals f to the minus one of y. In terms of exponentials and logs, specifically, we could write y equals e to the x, x equals log e y. So those are two sides of the same coin. So properties of logarithms. Now, as the logarithm is the inverse function of an exponential, then clearly it has to share very similar, if not the same, properties. And all you have to do is to remember to swap the argument and the output variables as appropriate. So what we're going to do in the following pages is that we're going to derive the standard rules for logarithms, but we're going to do that by starting from the corresponding operations on exponentials. So you can see the rules aren't something just to memorize and learn and think where have they come from. The rules are largely obvious if you remember that the log is the inverse function of an exponential. So let's remind ourselves then of some of the properties of exponentials. So the first one was related to rules of indices. So if we change from x to x plus y, or x to x minus y, we get a fixed relative change in the exponential based on y. So here we go. If we wrote something like e to the x plus y, that's the same as e to the x times e to the y. Or e to the x minus y is the same as e to the x divided by y. And you could, if you wanted, write that in a function form. Now, the exponential is always positive, and it changes monotonically. And it's got some core properties, which we looked at in the previous video. e to the 0 is 1. The limit as x goes to infinity of e to the x is infinity. And the limit as x goes to minus infinity of e to the x is 0. So these are the sorts of properties we want to look at and see how they cross over to the logarithm. Now, how do we go about linking exponential and log? So first of all, these statements here are, and that's key, they are a definition. The logarithm is defined as the inverse function of an exponential. Therefore, if capital A equals e to the a, then by definition, log e of capital A equals little a. If capital B equals e to the b, then by definition, log e of b equals little a. So there's nothing to understand there. That's just reminding ourselves of the definition. So now let's look at some of the common things you come across. What happens if I want to multiply a and b together? Well, I'm going to get e to the a times e to the b, which is e to the a plus b. And now here's the interesting one. This bit that I've just put in a box, I'm going to write this, is by definition. OK? Because the definition of the log is if I do the log of e to the a plus b, then the log of that is a plus b. So you can see the log to the base e of capital A, capital B, is little a plus little b by definition. However, I already know that log e of capital A is a, log e of capital B is b, so therefore this is equal to log e of capital A plus log e of capital b. So in other words, the log 
of the product is the sum of the logs. So if I write that, the log of product equals sum of logs. And that just falls out from the definition. What about the second one? What if I do A capital A divided by capital B, which is E to the A over E to the B, which gives me E to the A minus B. Now, by definition, because I've got this A minus B here, log A, log E of capital A over capital B must be A minus B. That comes straight out of the definition. But you notice that this is log E A minus log E B. So the log of a quotient, you basically subtract the logs of the original numbers. So those are two important rules of logs that people will have come across. And hopefully you'll see they've come directly from an understanding of the exponential and the log def being defined as an inverse function of an exponential. So I've rewritten the rule here. And here's the interesting bit. If we remember the inverse functions, so what we've said is the log of a product, so there we are, the log of AB is the sum of the logs of the underlying numbers. So you can see log EA plus log EB. If I was to look at the exponentials, which is over here, you'll see the exponential of a sum, so E to the A plus B, is the product of the original exponentials, E to the A times e to the b. And what do you notice here? These words are back to front because they're inverse functions one of another. So they're consistent with the two functions being inverses one of another. Similarly, if we look at division, so here was the rule. If I did log e of a divided by b, then I found that's log e of a minus log e of b. So that says the log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. OK, now if I did the exponential of a difference, you can see here e to the a minus b, you can see it's the quotient of the original exponential. So again, you see how these numbers have been swapped. So again, this is consistent with being inverse functions one of another. What about powers? Well, again, you'll see I've just put the definition up here to start. What if I wanted to do something like C equals capital A to the power K, which is E to the A K? Well, from the definition, and again, I'm going to write that. So this is by definition. That's important that we see that. OK, log E of s capital C equals A K. But I can see that that's K log A. And similarly, if I did something like D equals B to the minus M, which is the same as E to the minus B M, you'll see that log E of D by definition is minus B M, which is minus M log E B. So you'll see that that's another rule that you may have come across with logs, that if you take the log of something to the power, you can take the log of the original number and then multiply it by the power. OK, so the log of a power is the product of the power and the log of the original number. And the log of a negative power clearly gives a negative number. That's assuming, of course, that this um, log EB is positive in the first place. Some useful values of logs then, some common values that you might find useful. If you said y was e to the 1, and then said, right, I'm going to take the log of y, or in other words, log e of e to the 1, then you find you get 1. OK, so log e of e to the 1, or log e of e, is 1. Hopefully that's obvious. If y equals e to the 3, log e of e cubed is going to be 3 log e of e, which is just 3. And here's the most interesting one. If you do e to the 0, log e of e to the 0 is 0, because that's the power, times log e of e, which is 0. So here's the summary. e to the 0 is going to be 1. We know that. If we put something to the power 0, we get 1. And therefore, log of 1 has to be 0, 
So what we're saying is this number in here is actually 1. So we've just shown that the log of 1 is 0. Other useful values. If you do log e of e to the ax, you just get ax. A log e of e to the minus bx, you just get minus bx. A more useful one, however, is this. What happens if you do log e of a, capital A, e to the ax? What you find, because there's a product in there, is you get log e of ax plus log e of e to the ax, which is just ax. And what does this look like? And what you'll see, the logarithm of an exponential gives the equation of a straight line. And that's going to be very, very useful. So the logarithm of an exponential, see we've taken the log of a e to the ax, and you've ended up with a straight line graph. Now, we noticed in the previous video certain properties for exponentials. If x was bigger than 0, e to the x was bigger than 1. If x was smaller than 0, e to the x was less than 1, and e to the 0 was 1. And here's the graph, and you can see. So there was the zero point, and you can see if x was bigger than zero, e to the x is bigger than one. If x was less than zero, e to the x was less than one. Now, we can use the same sort of insights and apply them to logarithms. So first of all, log e of one has to be zero. Now, why is that? If you think of the inverse functions, we've got e to the x equals y, or x equals log e y, then you can see a value of x of 0 gives a value of y of 1. OK? So a value of x of 0 gives a value of y equal 1. So correspondingly, a value of y equal to 1 must give a value of x, which is 0. So here's our functions, y equals e to the x, x equals log e y. And if I use the similar insights to the two that I've given up here and just use this reversing of the argument, what you can see is we said things like e to the x greater than 1. And remember, this e to the x corresponds to y. So y greater than 1 corresponds to x greater than 0. In other words, it corresponds to log y greater than 0 because x is log y. And similarly, y less than 1 corresponds to log y less than 0. And those are values you'll use a lot. So the log of a number that's bigger than 1 is greater than 0. And the log of a number that's less than 1 is negative. And these follow, again, directly from the inverse function, them being an inverse of an exponential. You can do the same sort of thing with a base 10. So I'm not going to dwell on this, but you can see y equals 10 to the 1, then log 10 of 10 gives you 1. y equals 10 to the 3, well log 10 of 10 to the 3 just gives you 3, you're just pulling out the power. y equals 10 to the 0, well log 10 of 10 to the 0 gives you 0. So I'm not going to dwell on these because this is the same as with the e, all I've done is replace e by 10. Now, to finish off, some textbooks suggest that certain default notation indicates which base is being used with a logarithm. And so they'll say things like, if you see ln, it means log to the base e, and if you see log, it means log to the base 10. Well, personally, I would advise against this, because if you make an incorrect assumption compared to the person you're reading, you will get it wrong. And I would recommend you should always include the base, is it log to the base e or log to the base 10, if there is any chance at all of confusion, and there often will be. There are some contexts where which log you're using is obvious from the context. So for example, if you're doing calculus, you will nearly always be using log to the base e. And if you're using both diagrams, you'll nearly always be doing log to the base 10. But in general, always put the base in there would be my recommendation and you won't make a silly mistake. Now, here's a warning for you. If you use MATLAB and you just write log, MATLAB will assume you mean log to the base e. 
if you want log to the base 10, you have to write log 10. So some conclusions. Logarithms have properties which are linked to the related properties for exponential functions. Okay, so the log of a product or quotient or power, okay, you can get some simple rules. So the log of a product is the sum of the logs. The log of a quotient is the difference of the logs. And the log of a power is the power times the original log. And they came just directly from the exponential. The log of a simple exponential function is a straight line. And that can be very useful in modeling. And some other useful values, log of 1 is 0. And the log of a number bigger than 1 is greater than 0. And the log of a number smaller than 1 is negative.